British political and defense analysts and strategists have been monitoring the ongoing situation in Gaza. One believes Israel thinks it has the upper hand in this present conflict. The level of casualties that Israel has taken, the Israeli military has taken, and the number of casualties they claim to have inflicted on the Hamas seems to indicate that um, Israel is, is slowly but surely achieving its stated objectives of uh, defeating the, the rocket attacks, but it is also making headway, it seems to be, in its perhaps understated objective of, of undermining Hamas authority within in Gaza. However, um, I think um, it's perhaps more uh, fighting to, be, to come as Hamas attempts to lure Israeli forces into Gaza, into Khan Yunus refugee camp, uh, where they will be hoping to inflict great casualties on, on Israel and uh, elevate the cost of the operation to the point where you know, a, a ceasefire becomes desirable for both sides. He feels in the current conflict, Israel has learned lessons from previous incursions into Palestine. They seem to have established a perimeter around Gaza, uh, Gaza City and around, around other sort of urban strong points. And what they seem to be doing is, is then you know, sending in perhaps uh, special forces teams to target pinpoint locations, perhaps rocket production facilities, uh, warehouses, uh, high value um, Hamas uh, leadership targets, that type of thing. So there, there does seem to be, at the moment anyway, um, although the fighting is, appears to be sort of ebbing and flowing and, and intense and, uh, and lull, between intense fighting and lulls, um, what, what Israel appears to be doing is taking a, a more calculated uh, strategy in um, stepping back from fully engaging and wanting to get involved in the type of dirty street fighting, if you like, uh, urban guerrilla warfare that Hamas clearly would want them to do to uh, you know, change the balance of forces. As the fighting continues in the Palestinian territories, he believes hopes of a peace settlement in the Middle East are on hold. It's also made it very, very difficult for Israel to um, or the, any, the Arab nations to reconsider um, uh, the Arab peace plan, Arab League peace plan, which offers Israel um, full diplomatic recognition in exchange for a return to the 1967 borders. That will probably now be taken off the table. And it's difficult also to see Syria wanting to negotiate with Israel over the Golan. So, you know, in terms of the wider diplomatic um, uh, picture in the Middle East, this will have you know, set things back maybe by 12 months perhaps even 18 months. Um, but you know, that is uh, further down Israel's list of calculations than providing security to its citizens. As diplomatic efforts get into full swing, the inauguration of US President Barack Obama could bring a fragile peace. The short-term Obama policy will be to try and uh, at least maintain some form of stability, whatever that looks like, and it could you know, it, I'm not sure really anyone knows what that looks like at the moment, maybe a, a, a temporary, a, a, some form of ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, uh, which at least contains the situation and stops the violence to or brings it down to an acceptable level. With a ceasefire in place, it could take up to two years before Israelis and Palestinians begin the task of building bridges in efforts towards a lasting peace.